Well, hey everybody, it, we are back at it again. Yep. Uh, every week we are gonna unpack the message from the week before. Um, and this, this last month and this last series we're in is on Habakkuk mm -hmm. and really, how Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, really applies to where we are today. Yeah. And you can see so many parallels uh, to what's happening in the world around us. Now, we are going to do this every week. Uh, this is just to help you grow in your faith. Yeah. Go deeper in the Word. I mean, there's so many times where you step off stage. You've done it. I've done it. You have 35 minutes to speak, and you really go, man, I wish I had said, or I wish I hadn't said. <laughs> I wish I could unpack it a little bit more. Um, and so this is just that moment to help us grow in our faith and go deeper. And so we hope you're enjoying it. Uh, but we're going to do something real special today. Uh, last week, uh, we were not able to film. Pastor Greg and I did his message, um, and we talked about it, but we were on Zoom, and because of Rogers... Uh, the internet didn't work, and so we weren't able to do it. So today we're going to unpack both. Yeah. So we're going to do two weeks ago your message, and we're going to do my message from this past week, and we're just going to unpack what God is saying to us. And so, um, you know, last week or two weeks ago, you talked about uh, being okay with Jesus getting the last word. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's something you said that I'd like for you to unpack for me a little bit. What did you mean by Jesus is God's last word? Yeah, so Jesus is God's last word. Um, I think I think one of the scriptures that really put it out really plainly to us is uh, in Hebrews chapter 1. The writer of Hebrews is talking to a bunch of Christians who've gone through crazy persecution. And they're like, bro, we're leaving Christianity. Like, we yep. don't want to live like this. This is bad. I thought things were going to be better for us and things like that. And... What he ends up doing is that he reminds them that Jesus is essentially God's last message. Yeah. And he says to them that in the past, God used to speak to us through the prophets. But in these last days, which are the days that we live in, he says he's spoken to us in the person of a son. So when we say that Jesus is God's last word, this is God's final word concerning righteousness. It's his final word concerning um being saved. Jesus is God's final word concerning blessing, concerning yeah. favor, concerning how he's going to deal with the evil in the world, injustice, everything. Everything that you can think of of how God's promises even get fulfilled and how um, the prophecies will be fulfilled, everything culminates in Jesus. And that's why Jesus is God's final message to all of humanity, to all of creation. And that's why we as Christians who trust in him we're essentially trusting in God's final word. Amen. Well, and it, I think it's amazing when you unpack that to say, you know, when you read the scriptures, how it comes off the page mm. of, of the life of Jesus and how we are called to live like he did. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to be honest, I ain't perfect. And Lord knows I make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And I have never become like Jesus. But the goal is to be like Jesus. Why? Mm. Because, well, this is who we are called to model. Yeah. This is who we're called to be. Yeah. And I think it's just amazing when you see that. And that's why when people tell me they're they're not reading their Bibles, I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't understand it. <laughs> it's so true. How can you be a Christian and not want to, to know more and read more? I, it blows me away. And that's what gives you your assurance is that when you get into the Word and you see it, like just as you brought up this um, this series and you thought of through this series of how Habakkuk shows this parallel between the times we're living in in comparison to the times that he's living in, that when we read the Scriptures, we can be so assured of God's grace towards us, that God is for us, that God already knows about this and he already has a plan for this because he already laid it out. And if Jesus is the final message, then it's like, man, Jesus died and resurrected. He's victorious. So the final message of God is victory. Like, it's it. not defeat. That's it's it. not an ending. It's like, nah, this Christ is literally the new beginning, the new life. So knowing that, mm -hmm. knowing that Jesus is that life, and knowing that it's, it's, um, it's that joy, the victory that we live in, how do we walk that out in 2022 yeah. when... Really, truthfully, when you look around us right now, there is so much happening. How do we walk out and have victory in a season that can be difficult uh, and, 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 and reminding ourselves of the faithfulness of God? How do we walk that out? How do we practically do that? I think one of the awesome ways of how even God told Habakkuk of what to do is when he talks to Habakkuk in chapter 2, he tells him to write the vision and make it plain because it speaks for a future time. I'm going to end everything. 
yep. and then tells him that the righteous live by faith. Right. So the way that we actually walk this out is literally by holding on to our confidence in Christ being God's final message concerning this. That God's going to deal with all the evil we're seeing. He's going to deal with all the corruption. He's going to deal with all the pain that we're seeing, all the grief that we're going through. Jesus is literally going to deal with it and has dealt with it through his death, burial, and resurrection. So the way we live this out is living by faith in him. Not just solo in your individual walk with God, but in community with other brothers and right. sisters who've been trusting Jesus longer than you, that can sharpen you, that can encourage you. And we just, like the proverb says, iron sharpens iron. And that's how so we just good. move. So good, so good, so good. So, with that in mind, mm -hmm. if you haven't seen Pastor Greg's message, you're not able to. <laughs> yeah. uh, because we weren't able to go live that week. Yep. Because again, mm -hmm. Rogers. Now, we have forgiven Rogers. We have... You know, we've, you know, we know that that's what God's called us to do is to forgive. <laughs> uh, but if you missed that message, we apologize. It's not online. Uh, but for those of you that were there in the service, it was a powerful message. Um, and I think it's so much you can learn and gain from it. Uh, and so then this past week, yeah, we had a good Sunday. Yeah. And it was you. You were speaking. And I you was... were speaking on how we got to be okay with the outcome that God chooses. Yeah. Like, whatever it looks like. And you brought up how Habakkuk was just so frustrated that he makes a complaint to God. God gives him a response. And based on the response, he has another complaint about God's response. He's like, bro, what are you talking about? You're going to bring Babylon. I just told you that Judah's already being wicked. Right. Don't bring another nation that's even more wicked to come deal with us. This doesn't make any sense. But it's, it's that <laughs> encouragement that God eventually begins to tell him, like, hey, the, the righteous... They'll live by faith. Just just trust in me. Yeah. Yeah. With regardless of how this is gonna look. Right. <laughs> just trust me for it. So I wanna ask you, like, why is it so important for us as Christians to trust God with the final outcome regardless of how it looks? Because it can be difficult. Oh, it's difficult. There's no question. Um, but I think the reason why we gotta trust God with it is it simply comes down to if you and I want to fix the mess, if we were to come up with a plan, mm -hmm. I think we're smart enough, we come up with a decent plan. Yeah. But the truth is, we could never fix it. Uh -huh. We can't fix it. Mm -hmm. When you look at the world around us, we look at the things that are happening, we look at the things that are transpiring, we, even when you watch the media, there's so many different narratives. And mm -hmm. who's telling the truth? Like it's, yeah. It is so muddy right now, yeah. nothing's clear. Yeah. So the truth is, how how can how we need to trust God with the final last word is because you and I can't fix it. Yeah. The government ain't gonna fix it. Mm -hmm. The the media ain't gonna fix it. Yeah. The smartest people in the world are gonna not gonna be able to fix it. Yeah. We have to trust God because He's the creator. I mean, this is what I believe. Yeah. That's what I know you believe. Yeah. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He created everything that we see and he gets the last word. So if he yes. gets the last word, we need to be okay with the outcome that he determines is best for us, mm -hmm. even if it's tough. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can only imagine for Habakkuk to be sitting there going, I have a complaint, Israel's <laughs> doing this, they're not doing these things, they have all these things they're doing wrong, and God goes, well, I'm gonna send the Babylonians to wipe them all out. <laughs> well, why? Yeah. And he goes, but what he, what he comes to the conclusion and I believe that this is what every Christian needs to do, especially in this season, is when God gets the last word, it's so important because he knows what's best for me. Even if, if I don't necessarily understand it, maybe even agree in the moment, the outcome is what I need. Yeah. And that's why we got to trust him. And that's why it's so important in this season. The righteous will live by faith. Well, yeah. the righteous have to live by faith. Yeah. It's not will. We have to if we want to see this through. That's so true. Because that was kind of just touching on... Um, my next question was, what's faith's actual role in this? Like, I mean, we it's it sounds good, it is true, but it's like, man, to actually believe that, like, what does faith actually look like for us to actually trust God with the final outcome, even if it looks like Babylon winning? Right, <laughs> right. I think it really comes down to... Um, like God, like the Bible gives these woes that God gives. Woe to the person that does it this way. Woe mm -hmm. to the person that's corrupt. Woe to the person. And he says, woe to them. Why? Because 
if you need to understand that this is not the right way to live and if they are doing there will be judgment so we know that they that god gets the last judgment yeah and so that's important for us to recognize that god will deal with the corruption yeah but i think it's really amazing to me is right at the end habakkuk goes if 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 there's no more fruit on the trees if famine he talks about you know if if there's no more crops there's no more all of these things start to happen and and we start to see that there there is no fruit on the tree there is no crops in the fields i'm still going to praise you i'm still going to trust you i mean in our society today we're seeing they're talking about food shortages we're talking about interest rates yeah. and since 1998 they've never seen an interest rate go up so high yeah. and, and, and the ramifications for that we've got inflation gas prices we, we can see all of these things and and it's similar yeah. to what what he's talking about Habakkuk's going well if all of these things no fruit on the trees if there's famine if there's if there's no rain if they, like, all of these things and we go man we've got all these things facing us right now I think it's this moment where you go, man, with all of this happening, it's my faith that's going to see me through. It's that trusting God that he's going to be okay. And Habakkuk gets to the place where he sees all of the negative yeah. and goes, but God's got me. Amen. He sees that, you know, there's no fruit on the trees. There's, there, you know, the, 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 the fields are empty. He goes through this list. Well, we can sit there and go, gas prices are high. How am I going to pay for it? Uh, you know, uh, interest rates are going up. How am I going to pay my mortgage? Uh, you know, there's there's few food shortages. And, and we see all these things and we can look at them and go, here's my problem. Or we can say, this is an opportunity where I'm going to trust God and going to see him perform miracles in my life. And I think that's where we've got to get to, especially as we continue to walk this journey. Yeah. Uh, because it's easy to look at face value and go, man, we're, we're, we're in trouble. Yeah. But what we recognize is God's got so much more in store, so we just got to trust Him in the season. You know, it's so interesting. I, I want to come to just to ask you about your final thoughts, but just as you brought up that praise from Habakkuk in Habakkuk 3, and just believing God as seeing these difficult moments as opportunities for miracles to happen, I thought about the theme for this year. Yeah. That we're believing God for greater things. That's it. And who would have thought? That in this season, we would be seeing the things we're seeing, but yet we started off the year saying, man, God's going to do some yeah. great things. Like, right. Better and bigger than we've ever seen before, and that's what we're trusting in. And we know that God is a God who does great things. Right. Amen. Well, and, and again, that theme came you know, in November, praying about it. God really kind of gave that word to us, and I really felt for our church that that's what it is, greater things. We're believing for greater things. Mm-hmm. And But I think this is where we get ourselves in trouble where all of a sudden we see all the negative and we go, well, must not have heard from God. Mm. Because, well, how can we so see true. greater things when financially we're strapped, when food shortages, all these negatives so start true. to come in front of us. And it's that's when we lose our faith in these moments. But instead, we need to look at these moments and allow it to encourage us. Yes. Allow our faith to be even uh, more enhanced, more on yes. fire for God to say, you know what? Now I'm going to see it and nobody's going to be able to question it was a miracle yeah, or not. Yeah. Because you're going to go, we were up against all of these reasons why yeah. this shouldn't have worked. Yeah. And yet, God still came through. Amen. Right? And Amen. so I, uh, I, I'm still trusting God for greater things. Yep. Like I, Just because of what we're seeing, I don't believe that God's not going to do greater things. Yeah. Man, I'm stirred up. I don't know if it's exciting. Up. Exciting. I don't know if you stirred up, but I'm like Pentecostal stirred up right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of myself, but I want to encourage you that. Just remind yourself that God is able to do impossible things. Yeah, he He's is. able to do greater things. And we are joining our faith together with you as a community, as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are believing God to do great things now. You can look at all the difficult situations that you're facing and face it with a smile knowing that God has your back regardless of what happens because he's just that good. So, so good. Pastor so good. Mark, yeah, you stirred us up, but I want you to close us with some final thoughts. What would you want to say moving forward for everybody this week? I think moving forward this week, um, stop focusing on the negative. Um, I'm the first to admit that I do it. 
I'm the first. I watch a lot of news. I love to watch a lot of politics. Uh, it's something I'm interested in. But what often happens is I can get to the end of a, of a video or I can get the end of a news a newscast and go, the world is literally falling apart. Yeah. Like I And I've said those things. Those words have come out of my mouth. Um, I've looked at it and went, I have no idea. I've called it crazy. I've called it nuts. Things are falling apart. The world's upside down. Like we say all these things. And the truth is, at face value, that's what it is. That's what it feels like. But I think if, we, if we're if we not careful, we will get trapped in that, that thought pattern yeah. and not believe for greater things. And when we're reading through the book of Habakkuk, I, I, I was amazed when we when it kind of just jumped off the page to me. I don't know anybody that's ever done a series on Habakkuk. I, I, I genuinely don't know that. Um, but when it jumped off the page and I'm going, wow, there's so many parallels. And then I'm stopped and I went, but look at how he responds. Yeah. He sees God moving through the difficulties. Amen. So I really feel that we need to stop focusing on the negative and really put our hearts in, okay, God, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure how, but I'm going to trust that you're going to see us through. Amen. And I'm going to see miracles. I'm going to see signs and wonders. I'm going to see these things happen because you are God. Amen. And you, you get the last word. Um, and so, you know, just be encouraged by that. Yeah. Be encouraged by the fact that, you know what, we're going to see God do these great things, but you need to stop focusing on the negative and start praising God in the midst of everything around us because at the end of the day, He's still a good God. He's still faithful. Amen. He's still showing up. He got you up out of bed this morning. He's still there. Amen. The fact that we're sitting here talking about the faithfulness of God, everything you can, you can see so many good things in how Amen. God operates. Focus on the positive. Don't, don't, don't neglect uh, focusing on the positive because as soon as you do, you get yourself in a place where you just, you're down, you're out, you yeah. know, and, and it's hard to get back up. But if yeah. you can keep your eyes on Jesus, it's going to be all right. I just feel like you should just pray and just close us off in that prayer um, because I really believe that there's somebody who's watching this that not only was stirred up by what you heard, um, but I feel like you really feel like you just want somebody to come alongside of you because you're really in a difficult spot. And it seems like you can't see your way out of it. And we want you to know as your brothers in Christ that we are believing God with you, that God is gonna take you out, he's gonna put you on higher ground and great things you are gonna be able to see in these days ahead. So Pastor Mark, could you close us in prayer? Yeah. God, you know every need, you know our needs in here, and you know the needs that are watching this. God, you know everybody's situations. You know the struggles that they're facing. You know the uh, the mental health. God, you even know uh, the physical needs, the the financial needs. God, you know it all. And God, right now, if there's somebody watching this that's struggling, God, I pray right now that the Holy Spirit would just take over. God, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our comfort. God, I pray that those that need to be comforted would be comforted. God, those that need to know your peace would know your peace. God, those that need to know your healing would know your healing. Those that need to know your restoration would sense and see that you are moving in their lives. God, we are just believing that you are going to touch their lives. God, we believe it's not by accident that somebody's watching this. God, we believe it's not by accident that we're in this series. God, we don't believe, but we don't believe in coincidences. We know that you're actively moving. And so, God, if there's anybody watching this today, would they be just fully aware that you stopped everything for they get their attention because you care about them? Yes. And so, God, I just pray today that you would stir up our faith, stir up our understanding, stir up our desire to see you move in our lives, but, God, also that we would have a desire to have you just invade everything that we do. Yes. Allow us to find joy. Allow us to find peace. Allow us to be excited about the future. Not negative about the future, but be excited because, God, you've got greater things in store. Yeah. So, God, bless everybody that's watching this. I pray that I pray for our country. I pray for our world. I pray for, the, for our government. I pray for the things that are happening around us. God, I pray that you would have dominion over yes. all of it yes. and that you would take control. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we will see you next week. Yeah, we will. <laughs> God bless.